Hey everyone, welcome back to the It's a Mind Game podcast. I'm so grateful to have you here listening in. I actually dived into some statistics the other day and saw that there's at least 150 of you who are listening to every episode, which is really, really cool. Um, so thanks so much for being such an avid listener. And it's it's really beautiful to know that you're joining in on each and every one. Um, if you are really enjoying the podcast, it would be great if you could leave a review because the more reviews, the more it will kind of boost the podcast up in all the algorithms and, and fancy things. So whether you're listening on a podcast or on YouTube, um, if you could do that, that would be really great. As for today's topic, I thought I would talk about how your plan to do less exercise actually results in you doing more. And this topic come about as I had a wonderful conversation with one of my clients yesterday about step counts and how sometimes while our intentions are good to reduce the step counts, our sneaky disordered self can creep in and kind of make a mess of our good intentions. So I'll explain a little bit how it kind of goes. And it's one of those things where if you've experienced it, you're just going to know. And if you haven't experienced it, you could sit there and go, huh? what is she talking about? And that's completely okay. Um, but for those who get it, I really hope that you find this episode helpful and it actually helps you to make progress with successfully reducing your exercise versus trying to and, you know, essentially doing more. So the simplest example I can give is if you are somebody who does 20,000 steps a day, and then all of a sudden you decide, all right, 20,000 is too much. I need to cut back. I'm going to drop down to 15,000 steps a day and that's it forever and ever. Part of you really likes the idea of that. It sounds really good. Um, it's beneficial for your health. It's helpful towards your HR recovery. But then the other part of you is going, huh, but I'm the person who does 20,000 steps and I take pride in doing 20,000 steps and 15,000 is just not enough. And you're going to come up with all these reasons why 15,000 isn't suitable and 20,000 is. And what this can lead you into doing is day one comes around of this new step goal and a little voice starts to sneak in and chatter and go, oh, look, you know, you are going to do this 15,000 steps. I know you are. But what about if just for today you do 20,000 steps because you like doing 20,000 steps and then tomorrow will only do 10,000 steps because then we're going to break even 20,000 steps plus 10,000 steps equals 30,000 steps, which is the exact same as if I was to do 15,000 steps today and 15,000 steps tomorrow. As this plays about, you're sitting there going, wow, that's such a, that's such a good idea because I feel really good doing 20,000 steps and that's actually what I want to do today. I really don't want to do the goal I set out to do, even though it sounds good. So yes, okay, I'm going to do 20,000 today and I'll just do 10,000 tomorrow. It's the same thing. All good and well. Then you wake up the next day and you go, all right, today's the day I do 10,000 steps. And then that chatter starts to kick in. Oh, but 10,000 is really not enough, you know. I know you did 20,000 yesterday and you said you're going to do 10,000 today, but I just don't think we can. I think we need to go for at least 17,000 and then, and then, Maybe the day after that, we'll try for 10,000 and then we'll try and compensate the other days to make up for the overall goal. And needless to say, you get to the next day and you have the exact same conversation. What this ends up resulting in is let's say you had that goal of 15,000 steps every single day of the week. Because the goal wasn't suitable to your level of motivation, your level of desire, your capacity to actually achieve the goal, you may have ended up having a week that looked like 20,000, 17,000, 16,000, 15,000, back up to 20, down to maybe you did have a 10,000 day. And then you went straight back up to a 20 because the 10,000 felt so awful that you had to make up for that 10. So as you can see, while the good intentions were great, the good intentions were good, sorry, um, that makes no sense at all. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. While the intentions were good to reduce their step count, they were too, too dramatic, right? So that by the time you actually tried to fulfill this goal, you just found all these reasons how you can tweak it, manipulate it, change it, 
resulting in you doing more steps than ever before. And believe it or not, this is actually something that happens all of the time and it happens in all areas of HR recovery, eating disorder recovery. And honestly, it can even happen in the reverse. So if you've got someone who actually wants to lose weight in a healthy manner um, because they've got this uh, apprehension about dieting, they suddenly have one more day of oh, just this is way my last day of having pizza and I'll also have the pasta and I'll also have chocolate and cake and all these sorts of things. And then the next day starts and they they don't start their, their healthy meal plan or their healthy living. They go, oh, oh, I'm not ready. I'll just have one more day. And then they actually end up eating more than what they normally would, gaining weight because their diet goal was so extreme that it totally spooked them, right? And I know diet talk isn't... Uh, fond of in the HA recovery community and things like that. But I just want you to understand that that thought process of overcompensating because the idea is you really don't like the goal that you've set out can cause people on all ends of the spectrum to experience this kind of like compensatory, compensatory action that causes them to be in a worse position than what they were than when they started. Yeah. So at the core of this chat, if you are looking to reduce your exercise, it is key to set targets that feel within reason that you are confident you'll be able to execute so that when the day comes, you can act on it, give it a tick, and then the next day comes around and you can choose the next thing. Sometimes language like just for today, I will can be really helpful because if you set out to have, let's, let's stick to the step count side of things. If you set out to have a particular step count and look at it as a forever after situation, that could be daunting enough that you go, oh my gosh, I never want to start because once I start, then I have to commit to it forever, right? And the reality is we know anything to do with HA recovery is it's a temporary thing, right? Your training doesn't have to stay this way forever. Your nutrition doesn't have to stay this way forever. It's just for a short period of time to give your body what it needs to heal. And then you can continue to adapt and, and evolve and move on to the things you love and enjoy the most. So going back to the step count, if you're someone who does 20,000 steps and you know you need to reduce it, you might look at your first step being dropping down to 19,000, or it could be 19,500. And even though that seems really small, and you might go, oh, but that doesn't sound really good. You know, everyone says I should only do 10,000 steps. It doesn't really matter what sounds good or what everyone else says you should do because at the end of the day, if either you're not going to do it or it stresses you out that much that you end up doing more, it's not helpful. So that's where you really need to pick your lane and choose exercise targets that you know you're going to succeed in. This also helps you to build momentum. It helps you to build confidence. And it helps you to almost have that snowball effect that you can actually do the things you set out to do, which when you think about training in general, that's what entices you into training in the first place, because you start up as a beginner and then you start to watch yourself get better and better. And suddenly you're doing all these things you didn't think you could do. Right. And that process makes you feel really good. So we want to use that feeling to motivate you to get from where you are now to where you want to be. One more handy tip that I use with a lot of the ladies that I work with is a confidence scale. So what that means is when it comes to setting targets with exercise or nutrition as well, is you've got a scale between uh, from one to 10, sorry, one being zero, absolutely not, won't do it, insane, bananas, just absolute no room for it, <laughs> no capacity to do it. 10 is could do it with my eyes closed. I'm probably already doing it, if not something close to no challenge at all. Super simple. Yeah. When you're picking these challenges or changes, you want to pick something between a seven and a nine, because what that means is you're actually confident you can execute it, but you're not confident enough that you're already doing it. Could do it with your eyes closed. Um, it doesn't mean anything to you. That's the art in choosing goals that will challenge you, but also allow space to create change. Because if they're too easy, you won't do it at all because it's too easy. There's no, it's not a, it's, it's not a goal. So it doesn't matter how you wrap it up and tell yourself it's a goal. You don't see it as one because you know you can do it, right? So what's the point? So you need it to not be too easy that you don't see it as a challenge 
but you need it to be easy enough that you're willing to do it, you're willing to pursue it, and you're willing to invite curiosity around what you're setting out to do. Um, if that makes sense, I hope you found it helpful. If you would like more tips and tricks on HA or ED recovery, um, please let me know. You can send me a DM on Instagram or contact me on Facebook or leave a comment on any of the shows. That would be great. Um, I'm looking to expand the podcast and have more tips and tricks for you to help you with your HA recovery journey. As always, if you're looking to someone to help you through, I'm absolutely here for you. And as always, you can contact me with any of your questions. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.